is the present head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, the most dynamic international community within Islam. The community was established by Hazrat Mirza Khulam Ahmed in Kardian, a small and remote village in India. He claimed to be the expected reformer of the latter days, the one awaited by all major world religions. Founded in 1889, the community has continued to spread throughout the world, flourishing under caliphate, the system of spiritual leadership established after the demise of the Holy Founder. The current successor of this movement, Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, continues the work of the Holy Founder to revive the spiritual and moral state of mankind. The movement embodies the benevolent message of Islam in its pristine purity, a movement that preaches peace, universal brotherhood, and submission to the will of God. Ahmadi Muslims have earned the distinction and reputation of being a law-abiding and peaceful community. Within a century, the movement has reached all the corners of the earth and has been recognized and praised by the global community. Love for all, hatred for none. Those words from your third Khalifa are more important, more crucial, more essential today than they have ever been. And of course, the Ahmadi have always practiced 
this peace-loving philosophy. I am glad and inspired by the fact that the Ahmadis not only preach a message of love, friendship and understanding, but practice it fully in the way you include and invite others to share your gathering. An injunction to love all and to hate none is the avowed guiding principle of the Ahmadi life. I would thank you also that you have stressed uh, the importance of showing that Islam is a religion of peace, not the religion of hate, uh, as it was stated on the wall in the Yalsa, love for all, hatred for none. I think that is the message that the world really needs. That promoting religious freedom is an essential building block for peace and stability here and throughout the world. In this we are allied with His Holiness, a courageous champion of religious freedom and of peace. Love for all, hatred for none is the message that we see in this mosque and from the Ahmadiyya Association. Your people have been the leaders in taking the peace movement that one step further. The huge respect we have, we all have, for your work day by day in making a reality of peace and brotherhood across the communities in this country and across the world. Wherever the movement has been established, it endeavors to exert a constructive influence of Islam through social projects, educational institutes, health services, Islamic publications. I would like to pay an additional tribute to the work being done by Ahmadis in raising standards in Africa and particularly in education. Yes, Britain has welcomed the headquarters of the Ahmadis in this country, but it hasn't become something that's become, as it were, a closed sect in Britain. It's become a community that has sought to reach out to all of us. And that's very important, because the best way to break down the barriers of misunderstanding and prejudice is for that contact to happen, and I thank you for that. The Ahmadiyyan community contribute hugely to interfaith forums, to the richness of our community, and that is the same that's reflected across our nation. But what I would like to pay tribute to you as well this evening is the contribution that you make to wider society and the important charitable causes that you support, not just for your own communities, but for the wider communities. And that is to be acclaimed and that is to be applauded. Your faith is dedicated to serving the society that you live in and from what I've seen, heard and, and, and experienced from mainstream charities, schools and churches, your faith and community have contributed in significant ways. I have personally experienced and heard that you have raised tens of thousands of pounds uh, on sponsored walks for children, older people and people with disabilities. You have dedicated yourselves to charitable social projects and most significantly of all, you have not distinguished between faiths, ethnicities or communities. The community's many social projects aimed at helping those in need bears testimony to humanitarian concerns in respect of all human beings regardless of race, color, or creed. The Armidian community have an extraordinary reputation abroad for charitable work in Africa, India, Bosnia, and Indonesia, amongst other places. But your note, your community here too have an extraordinary reputation. You have been generous with your time and resources, and you have made yourselves part of the wider community. The Ahmadiyya community has always been at the forefront, not only of helping their own, but actually helping within society as a whole, is one of the reasons why, if I may say to you, your presence in this country has been so beneficial to us. In the past hundred years, you have given so much to the society in the United Kingdom and to societies everywhere globally. You are among those who give and who not only take. 
You give so much to so many societies that I have seen and felt and listened to and watched. Ahmadis are also renowned for working to serve the greater good through social, health and educational initiatives as well as mosque projects. Your own work, Your Holiness, particularly in West Africa, is well known. And we heard just now about your attempts to bring water and energy supplies to some of the poorest communities in West Africa. Together, we should fight common enemies such as illiteracy, disease, hunger, and poverty. The Admir Ahmadiyya mission has put structures in place towards the fight against these common enemies in order to enhance the dignity of man. The mission has been a vanguard and a partner in collaborating with government in the areas of education, health, agriculture, and human animation. The Amadiyam um, community, the mission in Sierra Leone, really they've made a pivotal contribution uh, to the education in our country. You just have to look around wherever you are. And I have to say, Your Holiness, that I was touched by the way in which your predecessor as spiritual leader instructed your community, the Amade community, to befriend and look after those suffering as a result of the Bosnian conflict. And I was very impressed by that. Everywhere that mankind suffers, your members have been active in bringing help and saving lives and limbs. For me, as a student of Islam for now almost 30 years, I am constantly amazed by the depth of service that is certainly represented by this community and tradition, by the depth of tolerance and the constant searching for what it means to be human. To be of human means to be of service, and I think this is so dramatically represented by the message of this community. All of us, whatever our political persuasions, hugely admire the work of the Ahmadiyya community here in the United Kingdom as we do across the world. Let us make a resolution. Let us make this resolution to promote the message of peace and brotherhood, which is your message to mankind, that people of different religions should not quarrel and fight with each other, but should accept and tolerate and live together in that spirit of brotherhood and peace, which is the essence of your religion. Love for all, hatred for none. I would like to shake I would like to thank everyone for you know, taking this time out and being present here uh, to have this dinner with us. Uh, it really means a lot to us uh, because uh, the thing that we are trying to do here is that we are trying to bring people from different faiths, different backgrounds, different uh, cultures so that we can sit down together and we can share the common things that we have. The most important thing is humanity. And being a human, it teaches us to be together, to be united. We have our differences, but that those differences cannot keep us apart. We can still have a, a relationship of love, understanding, tolerance. And it's not that it's uh, not a dream. It's not just an ideal. It's actually being practiced in different countries. Wherever the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is established, we have this relationship with our friends, with those people who are not even, you know, they are not members of the community, but they call themselves that they are honorary members of the community. That they, they are part of the community as if they were members. So we have that relationship with people in all different societies. And this is what we are trying to achieve in Greece as well. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, the good news uh, that we have is that the Ahmadiyya community has registered uh, in Greece. So which was 
for us a very big thing that you know we did not have a legal status we didn't, didn't uh, know if we were uh, on the right uh, side of uh, let's say the law uh, if we were living here illegally or something like that but since uh, we started the community here we have tried our best to do everything according to the law of the country and this is what the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has been teaching to its members all across the world as well that we live by the law of the country. There are a few things uh, that I would like to mention uh, due to the recent things that we see around the world as well. We see a lot of negative uh, you know, coverage of media about the, this ISIS, ISIL or other uh, terrorist organizations and it is said or it is being tried to say that this is Islam. When we you know, speak to people who are not, uh, who are not aware of Muslims or of Islam in depth, the people only know Islam through the media. So when they meet us, they talk to us, they, the first thing that they say is that, oh, you guys, you are killers. You know, you kill people, you uh, only have hate in you. And that's your teaching only. And they don't, they're not ready to listen. If you, you know, you can keep on trying and explaining to them that, no, this is not the teaching of Islam. The, the teaching of Islam is love and affection, you know, all the human values that uh, can be taught. But it's very difficult to convey that message to the people. I think that the reason being is that they might not be seeing that example in their lives. That so many things are preached but not practiced. So what we are trying here is that to give that practical example to people that look, we can live with this motto, love for all and hatred for none. And we can have a better society. We can work for the country, we can work for the community in a better way if we all are together. If we are not together, then people are trying to do, achieve the same thing, but they are trying in different places. They have you know, different platforms. But if we gather together at one platform, then we can do those things much easier, in a, a way better way. So the main thing here, the first thing, is unity. That all the people need to unite together. No matter what their differences are. Everyone is free to choose what their religion is. Everyone is free to choose what their belief is. Everyone is free to choose how they are going to live their lives. Everyone is free. But that does not mean that we cannot live together with different beliefs, different ideas. We can have those ideas. And if we think that a certain idea is good, we can take it. If we think that a certain idea is bad, we can reject it. It is our choice. We have that freedom of choice. The second thing is that we need to look after each other, our neighbors, in particular. When we see the crisis that we are facing here in Greece, I notice many people that they are trying to help their neighbors. They are trying to help those who are weak in their area, in their society. In that manner, we are trying to fight the crisis that we are facing. We are trying to help the country rebuild. We are making it easier for the people to survive in this difficult time. So whatever we have, we can share it with others. So if we can do that with other people, it will surely create a society which is more beautiful. If a person, you know, I see sometimes some neighbors or some other people that, you know, they are looking for bread in the, uh, the, the it is kubilia, I think that's what it's called. I have even forgotten the English word, it's dust, dust pink. From the dust pink, they try to find just that bread on the side of it so that they can use it. Why do they have to go to the bin? Why can't we think about them beforehand that, okay, these are our neighbors. Some people, they don't have the habit of asking. They don't beg. But they are suffering. 
we can find out, we can see their condition, and then we can try to help them out as well. If we have made something nice in our house, we can share it with our neighbors. That, you know, we made something nice without them feeling, you know, making them feel that, okay, you know, we're trying to help you. No. You made something good, you just took it to the neighbors that, okay, look, we have something. And then, when you go to their house, you will be able to see that if they are living in a good condition or not, or if they need even more help. There are different ways of helping others. So this will bring the unity, uh, the community together. This is the message with which Islam or Ahudiyat has been giving everywhere else. And this is what we are giving here now. Then, I have noticed one thing, um, which will, I think, um, if we try and work on it, we can help the country even more. Dishonesty. I've noticed that we sometimes are dishonest with the, our neighbors, we are dishonest with the country, we are dishonest with the authorities as well. Whenever you go for you know shopping, the person sometimes they offer you this thing. And I felt it very strange. They offer you that, okay, are we, you know, are you going to pay tax? Should we cut the, you know, give you a receipt with VPR on it? Or are you just going to pay us cash and it's not in the papers? What it's doing, what it's doing is that it's destroying the economy of the country. If we don't pay taxes, we are taking our country down. Individually, a person might be benefiting from it. At that very time, he might think that he's benefiting from it. But as a whole, he's losing. Because if we don't pay the taxes, the government is going to face a lot of problems. When the government faces problems, they, they make certain laws which can even create strong problems or more problems for the people. So why create those opportunities? Why can't we live with honesty? Why can't we pay our taxes accordingly which we are supposed to pay? So if we are honest, if we really want the country to get better, if we really want our society to get better, then we need to be honest. Honesty is a virtue, so we have to work towards it as well. And we see now in our friends as well, we can talk to our friends, that, look, you know, let's pay the tax. If other people are doing something, because some people even say that, okay, we cannot, you know, trust the authorities, we cannot trust the uh, lawmakers, you know, they, some people are corrupt, you know, these kind of things, you do hear these comments. But who are the ones that chose those, those people? We have this right that we can vote. After voting, we elect certain members. So it is our responsibility to elect honest people. So when we should elect, we should elect honest people. And when those people are elected, it's their responsibility to be honest to the people, to the country, and serve the country in the best possible manner. And if we notice that, okay, this person is not serving the country in the best possible manner, then we have to, you know, we, we should think that, okay, maybe next time we have the right to change our vote. It is not a political speech. It is a speech about honesty that we can work towards. So, we keep on trusting each other, then inshallah, uh, we will have a better society. Uh, as far as Islam is concerned, there is a lot of, uh, you know, people talk about ISIS and many uh, other jihadist uh, groups. Let me make this very clear that the teaching of Islam is of peace and love. It does not teach violence. It does not teach that people should go out and bomb themselves and you know kill so many people. In Islam it is said, in the Holy Quran, it is said very clearly that if a person is killed, an innocent person is killed, it is as if he has taken you know, the whole humanity has been crushed. So if just <coughs> an innocent person, you have killed the whole humanity. But does that mean that you are allowed to go and kill the person who is not innocent? That is the responsibility of the law. If someone is committing crimes, the law is supposed to look after them, not the individuals. 
the individuals are not supposed to go and start killing them. Islam is very clear as far as the teaching of peace is concerned. The word Islam in itself, the root word, is peace, salam. So when you have this root word, wherever it is, when you, you, know, you might have heard Muslim friends saying to you, Assalamu alaikum, right? They say this to you a lot, that Assalamu alaikum. What does it mean? It means peace be on you. So whenever we greet a Muslim, whenever he's, he is supposed to greet a Muslim or a non-Muslim, he is supposed to say, peace be on you. That, Look, you don't have to be afraid of me. I only want peace for you, nothing else. And this was the practice of the Holy Prophet Muhammad When he was uh, a statesman, under him, there were Jews who were living there. They were uh, idol worshippers as well. They were living there. They were Muslims as well. But they were all living in harmony and peace. They all had peace. So he gave us the example that it can be achieved. It's not that if a, a country is Muslim, if some people are Muslim, then they can, you know, they should start killing other Christians or other Jews or other atheists. They don't have that right. Because the example of the Prophet Muhammad was very clear that each and every person has freedom. The Holy Quran says that there is, you know, no compulsion in the matter of religion, like Quran 15. So how can somebody compel somebody else. So this is another very simple <coughs> teaching of Islam. So all we are trying to say is that Islam teaches love, affection, brotherhood. And you coming here, it is an example that you wanted to learn. That okay, a Muslim organization is organizing something, let's see what they are doing, what they are saying. It's a step forward. And we need these steps to be taken even more. Most probably in the near future, we might organize something even better. We have, you know, as far as the events of the community is concerned, that in the last year we did our first peace symposium in the Tanya Hotel. We are going to do similar events this year as well. We are going to organize our second peace symposium as well. We are also going to have an interfaith forum as well. Something that we have not done before. Interfaith forum in a sense that we will invite different religious leaders and who will tell us what their religion teaches about peace and harmony. So that all the people, Muslims, Christians, Jews, Hindus, Sikhs, they can come together and they can learn about each other. If we learn about each other, then we can have a better society. And that's what we hope to achieve. Uh, last year, in this dinner, uh, we had announced that we have started our peace campaign. So let me just tell you that this year, by the grace of Allah, we have distributed around 80,000 peace leaflets, which have teachings from different religions, as you can see on the banners here as well. So this is just the that peace leaflet that we have, and it has been distributed uh, in more than 80,000. So. Uh, our purpose is to spread peace and love, and that's, that's what we are trying to achieve. Uh, let me just ask if the dinner is ready. If the dinner is ready, then we will start with the dinner. If the dinner is not ready, then we will have the opportunity to ask questions if you have any. Is the dinner yes, it's, uh, it's ready? Yes, it's ready. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. And uh, please do, do let us uh, know if you would like to uh, come to the, the future events, uh, which will be held in different places as well.